Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review, we'll be covering the brand new MSI Titan 18HX. The 18HX is going to be MSI's highest performance offering currently on the market for those who are looking for either the best gaming performance or workstation-like capabilities in a laptop form factor. Notably, the two most important pieces of hardware for performance is going to be our GPU and CPU. And in this case, we have the NVIDIA RTX 4090 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the NVIDIA Core i9 14900HX. So as we take you with this for the entire review process from beginning to end, let's go ahead and get things started with the unboxing. So this laptop will be shipped to you exactly as shown with two boxes, the outside box being there for extra protection and security while it's being shipped. The inside box is fairly plain. It just has MSI Titan on it. So you know you're getting a Titan laptop, which is of course the premier series from MSI. Inside that box, we're going to find the laptop right there on the top with a cloth sleeve over it. So that sleeve helps keep it protected during shipping so it can't get scratched. As we dig down deeper into the box, just underneath of the laptop, we're gonna find a small pouch and inside of that, we'll find the product quick start guide. Now underneath in the first compartment, we're going to find a couple of accessories. We have a very nice 256 gigabyte flash drive and an MSI Dragon keychain. Located on the other side, we're going to find an included gaming mouse. And the model of this mouse is the M99 Pro. Located in the large rear compartment, this is where we're gonna find the system power supply. So of course a high-end laptop like this one will require a pretty significant power supply. This particular one supplies 400 watts of power with 20 amps and 20 volts. For the interface, it's using a bi-directional square connection rather than the older style round ones. And here you're gonna find your power cable. This is gonna be different depending on your region so that it plugs into your local power source. With our unboxing done, let's move on to the next segment of the review, which is going to be putting it on a scale so you can see how much weight you would be carrying around. The laptop itself comes in at about 8 pounds or 3.65 kilograms. If you also throw in the power adapter, which is pretty necessary, you're almost at 11 pounds of carry weight, also 4.8 kilograms. The other factor besides the weight is going to be the carry size. So as you can see with a quarter for scale, we're about an inch and a half of thickness as far as the height standing off of a desk on the backside. And towards the front, it's a little bit smaller, closer to an inch. With the size and weight metrics out of the way, let's power on the laptop and take a first look. Probably the first thing you'll notice if you see this laptop in person or in the video is going to be the RGB touchpad. You have a very large oversized touchpad with integrated left and right clicks. And of course your high-end laptop also needs a high-end keyboard. So here we have a mechanical keyboard from SteelSeries featuring Cherry for the switches. Flanking the keyboard on the left and right hand side, you'll see the perforations and that's for the sound system. We do have an amazing 4K display here featuring the mini LED technology, which is gonna give you an incredibly bright HDR experience. The integrated HD webcam at the top bezel has a privacy screen and also infrared built in so you can support Windows Hello. So let's go take a look at the software side of things. Now, while this laptop is very capable of being a workstation with the included hardware and how high performance it is, the aesthetic for this laptop is very much tailored towards gamers with RGB everywhere. 
And to control that RGB, you'll have to use MSI's software. And in that software, you're going to find tons of configuration options. One important thing to mention for all of our viewers watching this video on YouTube is that in real life, the touchpad is not showing that flashing and strobing effect. That is something created because of the shutter speed of the camera and the refresh rate of the LEDs. So in real life, it looks perfectly normal. So please enjoy a brief LED showcase. All right, moving into the next segment of our review, it's time to go take a look at our interfaces. Starting with the left-hand side, we have two USB type A ports. These are USB 3.2, Gen 2, and an SD card reader. On the back, we have our Kensington lock port. On the back side of the laptop, we have our power port for charging the laptop and running on mains power, HDMI output, and the RJ45 connection for local network connectivity. That port is by Killer and it does offer a 2.5 gigabit per second network connection speed. And finally, on the right hand side, we're going to find our headphone jack that's 3.5 millimeters, a USB Type A port, and our two USB C ports. So, one final look at the laptop with the lid closed just to get an idea of how it looks and how it's going to fit into a bag before we move into the next part of our review. All right, so here's where we really get into the details on the included hardware. Here we can see the NVIDIA RTX 4090, the Wi-Fi 7 wireless card, the 2.5 gigabit wired ethernet, the Intel Core i9-14900HX for the CPU, and all of the other details such as our 4K monitor panel. And in addition to the very high resolution and brightness, we do have a 120 hertz refresh rate on that screen. So the next thing for us to take a look at is gonna be our performance benchmarks. And before we start, let's look at our baseline temperatures and our baseline noise levels. So these noise levels are recorded in a worst case scenario right next to the exhaust. Take these readings and compare them to other reviews we've done so you can see if this is quieter or louder. The other baseline reading we like to get is gonna be our temperatures. So here with our infrared thermometer, we can see how hot the outside of the case is looking. The important thing here is to make sure anywhere your hands are gonna be sitting stays nice and cool to the touch so you don't get sweaty palms. We'll take all of these readings again once we get the benchmarks underway and see how much they've changed. One thing to mention about these temperatures you're seeing with the infrared camera is that the hotter, the better, because that means the system is actually getting rid of the heat rather than keeping it inside. So it's the internal temperatures that we check later that we want to make sure are nice and cool. So the first benchmark we're going to run is going to be Fire Strike from 3D Mark. And now that the system is under load, we'll revisit all of those measurements from earlier. We can see our fan speeds have gone up significantly due to the increased load to help keep everything nice and cool. As we go revisit the infrared thermometer, we can see that the temperatures here have remained mostly the same, but the hot spots have gone up a little bit.
Now for the jet streams coming out of the system, those are definitely hotter and they're much longer now. So you can see that the fans being run at a higher speed is forcing more hot air out and therefore the surface of the table is heating up appropriately. Then the power adapter itself is also working harder due to the increased load. So probably the most anticipated part of a review from the product showcase is showcasing its performance scores here with 3D Mark Fire Strike at 34,667, which is an incredibly high score even for a desktop system. And so let's go take a look back at the temperatures during the benchmark and see how the cooling system handled everything. We can see that some of the cores reached 99 degrees Celsius, but most of them in the high 80s and low 90s. This seems very hot, but actually the CPU runs that hot even on desktop systems running water cooling. So with that in mind, it actually did fairly well. The CPU is designed to get that hot and it will thermal throttle if necessary. Now for our other important piece here is going to be the GPU and the RTX 4090 only reached 68 degrees Celsius max. So after Firestrike, 3 Mark came out with the Time Spy benchmark, which is a little bit more new. So it's going to use the hardware in a slightly different way. We have some on-screen metrics right now you can see. And we're going to check back in shortly with the final performance scores. So Time Spy finished up with a final score of 19,796, which again is very, very good considering this is a laptop you can carry around in a backpack. Down below, once again, we have all the detailed graphs that were presented to us from the benchmark. And we're moving right along into our next benchmark, which is going to be Cinebench R23. And Cinebench is going to heavily load the CPU, so here's a chance to take a look at the noise levels again with the CPU running at a maximum load. Our final score for Cinebench, a multi-core score of 28,249 and a single core of 1,102. You can see how they graphed us right next to the Threadripper. With our benchmarking section done, we're going to move into our final part of the review, which is going to be the disassembly of the system. So you can see exactly what's inside, how it's put together, and how easy it is to take apart, and if there's a reason to do so, such as user upgrades. So we have a bunch of Phillips screws around the outside and middle of this bottom plate, and we'll take those off so we can open it up. So here we see all the screws that had to be removed to get the bottom panel off, and here is the first reveal of the inside of the laptop. You'll see in the bottom panel itself, it has lots of ventilation openings, and that's gonna be necessary to get all that cool air in from the dual intake fans on the bottom. There's not much free space down here. We have the large battery in the middle. That's a 95 watt hour battery, 6,200 milliamp hours as far as the actual capacity. We have our subwoofers and speakers next to the battery. And just above that is where we're gonna find the system RAM and our SSD slots. Now we have three M2 SSD slots. Two of them are generation four and one of them is generation five. So that means we can't put in the newest and fastest generation five SSD in one of these slots to get the fastest speeds possible. With four RAM slots, you can have a maximum memory configuration of 192 gigabytes. So we'll continue to tear the system down so you can see all the components in detail and see exactly how the system comes pre-populated. As you can see, there is room to add an additional SSD from the stock configuration here. Underneath of the heat shield, this is where we're gonna find the system RAM. And these are 32 gigabyte SODEMs, so that means we have 128 gigabytes of RAM as configured. And here's where things start to get a little bit more daunting. So we have all the RAM taken out, the SSDs taken out, the battery, the heat shield, 
and the cooling system. So you can see there's screws everywhere and they're all shapes and sizes. So we do not recommend taking apart your system to this degree. Now taking a look at the underside of everything, you'll see it's a ton of copper there for heat conductivity. And also we're not using any thermal pads. There's thermal paste for almost all the components, which really helps with the cooling. We see our CPU and the GPU that we're hiding underneath there. And that's pretty much the major teardown of this system. So with our disassembly complete, that also brings us to the end of our review for today. And we hope you enjoyed our product showcase for the MSI Titan 18HX. So with the video coming to a close, there's still plenty of resources for you to go take a look at if you want to see more and learn more about the system. So check out the video description and down there you'll find the product page link. And on that page, you'll be able to see the full system specifications and the current pricing and availability. And as always, we care about the community and we're here for you to answer any questions you might have after the video and just go ask those questions down below in the comment section and we'll try to help you out. And please don't forget, if you ever need any one-on-one -on -one help, you can always feel free to contact us by phone or email and we'll be more than happy to assist you. So that about wraps it up. Once again, this was Gentech PC and we'll see you next time.